This is M1, and this is part 2, and some things are going to happen this time. You might notice my character is looking a little bit skinnier. And sometimes that's a good thing. I wouldn't say so right now. Regardless, I need to go over to Petrus and take care of the most important part of this run. Let me just, uh, hang on. Okay, that's the second most important part, and now to take care of the first. Okay, there we go. Thank you, base cheat engine. I'm heading back here to Petrus's stash, but all I want are the homeward bones. Even though this is going to be a soul level 4 run, souls are going to be very important for the first part. As you might expect, that's pretty much because my means of attacking is limited. I need arrows. So I went ahead and picked up that inventory soul. I'll be picking up as many of those as I can, right off the bat. I'm heading down to New Londa Ruins to do what probably 90% of regular players do when they start a new character. Grab some souls and grab the Firekeeper soul. This kind of thing is why you always want to pick the master key. Some would say to not get it on your first playthrough, and I think I might agree with that. Unlike the shield and a sword straight sword, picking up that soul does not wake the dragon up. And now here I am in New Londa Ruin. I don't have enough ammo right now to take on the ghosts, even though I theoretically could if I did have the ammo. So I'll be going through as a pacifist. There is a certain way to do this. You need to go back here and wait for a few seconds. Waiting there is very important, not only to get the ghost that was straight ahead of me out of the way, but to get the ghost away from this corridor that I'm in now. If you don't do that, there's a very good chance he'll block your way, or if not, he'll kill you. After you get past that fog gate, you're pretty much home free as long as you keep running. I don't even try for that gap. I'm pretty good at Dark Souls parkour in general, but that gap always gets me for some reason, so I just went through the house. And that ghost right there is pretty much going to be the last thing to be a threat to you. And most people probably expected me to come here to get this. And getting that composite bow very early on is very important. Its base damage is around 20 higher than the short bow's base damage. 
which early on in the game is a huge difference. And I was trying to wait on the uh, ledge for a little bit longer to get that ghost away from the, from the big house, but I didn't wait quite long enough and he still nabbed me, but it was no big deal. At this point, getting out of the Nul on the Ruins is pretty much a guarantee. All you need to go do is go over here and jump. Now I just need to grab the Firekeeper Soul and Homeward Bone out. A lot of players, I think, will just turn around and run away. Or they'll intentionally kill themselves. I'm not good at getting out of there without falling to my death, and I like to minimize my deaths, so a homeward bone is my best option. This should give you a good comparison of the kind of damage difference you have between the short bow and the composite bow. I was really hoping on killing that guy in midair because that always looks cool. Didn't work out. A lot of viewers might be getting a little bit impatient, seeing as I'm not just running straight by all the hollows through the berg. But I really like killing all of the hollows as I make my way through the berg for the first time. It's kind of like a ritual for a new playthrough. A lot of players might be, ex or uh, viewers I should say, might be expecting me to use a lot of manual aim here in the Berg, but I don't really. It's just very te tedious to me and it's a lot faster to just use auto aim. Auto targeting. So as you might be noticing, I have to exhibit some semblance of caution when approaching these stupid little non-threatening hollow soldiers. Like I mentioned in the first part, that's kind of how you have to play with the bow. Fighting the hollow soldiers isn't harder with the bow, you just have to kind of wait for an opening. Because a lot of them have shields, and normally that's not an issue if you have a melee weapon. Because they are weak and you can break their guard easily but with a bow, they can block you all day. Large arrows are pretty expensive for a brand new character. Like I said earlier on in the game, a what might seem like a minuscule chunk of souls is pretty valuable. And if those boxes respawn, I've never seen that before. And 
and the jump cut because uh, I went through the berg again to farm some more arrow souls and what definitely didn't happen is me failing to parry a spear hollow and embarrassingly die. Why would that happen? Why would you say something like that? For total noobs, yeah, headshots do more damage. And this is the best way to deal with the spear hollows. Parry them, take a step back, fire. If you don't do that, it'll just be a whole day's standoff between you and the spear hollow. They take forever to even try to attack, and most of their attacks don't give you enough of an opening to hit them. The thing is, when you parry them, Taking a step back is very important, because otherwise your shot will just go right through them usually. Fighting a black knight with a, uh, with a bow is not really anything special. It's just very tedious and requires patience. The thing is, even if you have a crap weapon and you're on a low-level character, beating the black knights is usually no big deal at all, because you can parry them or chain backstab them or whatever. Can't do either of those with arrows. You can headshot them, but that doesn't do all that much more damage. So, really, it's just an exercise in patience. Why are you watching this? Easy as pie. I don't even want the blue tier stone ring, but the unrespawnable black knights count as many bosses. So I had to kill that one. I'm sure pretty much every player knows you can jump over this barrel, but since I'm a bow character, I might as well do the thing that you can do as a bow character. I don't know why I bothered to kill this lizard. I'm never going to use the Twinkling Titanite. I can't even. None of the bows require it and I can't wear any armor. Using bows, you can't use a plunging attack against the Taurus Demon like most people like to do. However, you can headshot him. And since his head is enormous, it's pretty easy to do, even for a terrible manual aimer like me.
nothing to it. Just beating out the Hellkite Wyvern. And now, even though I don't intend on going through his quest line, I'm gonna talk to Solar. There's nothing more to say. I kick a ladder down and stop playing. Bye.